and welcome to Dubai This Week. Our guest today is Issa Al Gurg, the group CEO of the Issa Salah Al Gurg organization. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. So things looked very differently here in the UAE in the 1960s. What brought your grandfather to establish the company in the first place? I think the, the important point is the best business ideas come from a, from a need. And I think my mm -hmm. grandfather established the businesses from the needs he had. So he had his own real estate. He wanted to furnish his real estate. So he set up a furniture company. Uh, he got the opportunity to deal with uh, the likes of Grundig and, and you know, home goods and white, white goods, sorry, and home appliances was another thing. Uh, he got the opportunity for, you know, dealing with uh, distribution for, for example, tobacco. And one thing we needed was to make sure that we had a functional and operational fleet. So we established a, a you know, a garage behind that to take care of that. We have Dunlop as wow. a backward and forward integration. And I think that ended up with what we have today as 28 companies. So your grandfather established the company in 1960 and grew up together with the country, with the UAE. What do you take as the legacy with these very big shoes to fill? I mean, to start with, of course, I'm really honored and privileged to be given this responsibility by the family. Um, you mentioned big shoes to fill. I have a very strong belief no one will be able to fill up those shoes, no matter how many generations are there to come. He has uh, really created a strong legacy for the family, which is going to live on even beyond him. And we see the, the benefits of what he has created from scratch more than 60 years ago, uh, living on today with us. Uh, I believe going forward, uh, building on those foundations and taking forward the history and legacy that we have as a family uh, and growing accordingly within the businesses that we have and within the organizations that we have is, is mainly our focus as a business. The company grew together with the UAE. Yes. What is one of your first memories as a child seeing your grandfather at work? I used to actually spend my summer holidays in, uh, in the company. So sometimes I'd be given the task of taking papers from one office to the other, and other times I'd be sent to a retail shop to uh, um, work on a cashier or learn how to make sure that I close the day with the rest of the team over there. Uh, I was uh, always given that task in summer holidays, so I never had the choice of enjoying my summer holidays at home. Uh, but uh, seeing him uh, doing what he does naturally without really thinking uh, you know, is, is, is what motivated me to really be able to reach to hopefully where he is. And, and that is the objective I've set for myself, to be able to serve the family the way he has served the family himself. He created everything from scratch, and uh, I'm blessed to have a foundation to build upon with him, uh, you know, after him, sorry. What did you take from him? I learned a lot from him. I learned patience. Uh, I learned uh, listening a lot, listening twice as much as you would talk. He always said you have two ears and one tongue, so make sure you listen twice as much. Um, always taking into consideration people's opinions, respecting everyone's uh, points of views, and making sure you do what's right. Everything else falls in place. So that's usually, I learned that from him, and in turn as well, I learned it from my mother as well, so from both of them. Listen more than you talk. Absolutely. There are many very impressive photos outside here in the hallway. Choose one and, and take me to that moment. One of him, where he was literally sitting with everyone around him from the family, proud knowing that he has a, a strong foundation that he has built and a, and a, a family that's together. And the, the view on his face and that proudness that he has is something that I aspire to hopefully be able to build in the next generations to come as well when it comes to us as, uh, as you know, cousins and, and siblings going together. What's it like working with the family? It's, it's amazing. It's interesting. I mean, there's no day that's similar to the other. <laughs> Every single day it's different, so you don't have a routine in place. Uh, but uh, the beauty of it is work never ends. Uh, we are blessed to have a coherent family that respects one another, that has uh, an understanding with one another. We have transparency, we have trust, and I think those are the core uh, principles that we live by every day.
entering your office, there was a picture of your grandfather with Sheikh Zayed and, and Sheikh Rashid. You told me it's from the 2nd of December, 1971. Correct. It was at that moment that the UAE was established. And I think that was the, that was a, I think we're blessed to have a photo like that, which shows as well his involvement in those days. And like I mentioned, I mean, we're blessed to be part of the UAE and really having this opportunity to serve this wonderful country. You're also named after your grandfather. Yes. And you are the group CEO, uh, I guess the third? Third generation. Third generation now. Yes. So what is the most important thing you take as a family legacy? I think the most important element is continuity and being able to continuously build on what we have. Uh, we need to make sure we perform and where we thrive uh, and make sure that we actually uh, keep building our future based on our legacy that we have from our past and learning from our historical uh, mistakes or our achievements as well is important for us to keep uh, taking our plan forward and developing our plan. One of the first things we did a year and a half ago is uh, come up with Vision 2025 for the group and that was literally embracing our legacy for a better future. So this is how we, we want to look into uh, our group inwards and outwards and be able to develop accordingly. So you have 28 companies under your belt. Yes. Uh, I would say the main manufacturing, industrial, retail, real estate, but you're really spread out. So what do you focus on as group CEO? So I'm, I'm quite blessed to have a very capable team under me and every organization of those 28 companies has its own leadership team. So uh, having the right team with you is half, half the solution and making sure that you have that alignment with your with your leadership team is important. So, uh, I believe as a as a family we like to diversify, and that's one of the main reasons why we are spread into those four main sectors, uh, as you mentioned. Uh, but uh, making sure that we build on those is important as well. So, uh, we established two new entities in the past. Uh, few months, so one is a distribution business, uh, Algorv Distribution, the other is uh, Algorv Joinery. So for Algorv Distribution, we are uh, you know, carrying out the distribution for Unilever, our, uh, one of our major partners. Uh, and uh, for Algorv Joinery is to make sure that we actually have an in-house capability to uh, deliver to our requirements in the projects that we deliver to. So, and, and going forward, we're looking to expand further into the businesses that we have. So. We give an equal amount of focus. I wouldn't say time, uh, because some businesses require more time than others, but an equal amount of focus to every business that we have to make sure that we do justice by them. And looking at your social media, your LinkedIn page, a lot of your emphasis is on the, the donation aspect. Your grandfather established a foundation. You talk a lot about uh, women and youth empowerment. Mm -hmm. How, how does your company contribute to that? So we have different initiatives in every role. Of course, uh, one is the uh, charity foundation, which my grandfather established. Uh, I, if I quote him, he, he mentioned this was his actually, his, his greatest achievement. Uh, so this is something he was really proud of. And we, we love that we are actually continuing uh, in that same foundation to ensure that it's a self-funded foundation that doesn't depend on any external donations. We make sure that we support uh, healthcare and education requirements in the UAE. Um, apart from that, when we look into the youth uh, initiatives, we've uh, established new initiatives, mainly uh, into the NAFIS initiative, which is recently launched by the UAE government. Uh, we have created initiatives as well, apart from NAFIS, for fresh graduates from university, uh, regardless of your nationality uh, and your level or, or field of education. So we, we look into the different fields that we have in the businesses and look into filling up those requirements that we have. So um, when we come to, you said women as well, right? So women empowerment and, uh, uh, is, is quite, and women development is quite important for us. Uh, we've established uh, policies and procedures. So we really looked at international benchmarks to set for ourselves and to follow. 
as a group. And one of the things we did, for example, is establish new policies, come up with uh, you know blind hiring to avoid any gender bias, for example, when we come to hiring. Uh, we One of the policies we introduced as a group is a 90-day maternity leave to give new mothers uh, the opportunity to uh, have more time with their family before coming back to work. We have the hybrid uh, structure for work in our organization where Friday is a work from home day. Uh, and, and that gives families more time to spend with each other, especially you know when kids come back home earlier from school. Uh, so we really are looking at an, an ecosystem to make sure that we make people's lives better. Because at the end, we are an organization that's looking for, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're actually uh, result oriented. So we're looking for results. So for me, it's a matter of you being able to contribute in a positive mindset. And, and that's the, the focus we have as a company. I think it's interesting because the, the government is very much pushing towards gender equality across many sectors. And it seems like you as a the private sector are aligning with the government. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also <laughs> still many misconceptions abroad about women in the UAE and then having your mother serve as, as the chairwoman of such yes. a big company uh, speaks volumes in itself. It's still hard, however, to get Emirati youth into the private sector. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that, to be honest. I mean. Comparing where we are today to where we were 10 years ago is, is a huge difference. All you need to do is go to the Emirates Towers, for example, and you'd see the amazing initiatives that are launched over there for the youth. You have Youth Hub, you have so many other initiatives that are ongoing over there. But uh, coming back to us as a private sector uh, organization, we, we launched our uh, national development program and we were able to attract amazing talent. I was impressed. I had a, a, you know, a presentation done by each and every one of them. We spent half a day to understand what were their contributions and the roles that they started uh, contributing in. And I was impressed to be able to see the level and quality of, of uh, uh, devotion and motivation they had. The government has set forward a lot of initiatives to support that. And I think the only limitation there is is within each and every person. Their limitations are within their, as, as, as if we can say motivation or personality, but leaving those aside, you have the groundwork set for you. I mean, I was able to get a job as a UAE national outside my family business when I first started. Uh, it was difficult for me. I got interviews left, right, and center. I got different opportunities, but I pushed myself and I never gave up. And I think that's the key. You should never give up and you should make, you know, keep looking for the opportunities to grow yourself. People look at someone like you who comes from an established family with the legacy that you have. You're the group CEO and they might think that a job like this came easy to you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, to become group CEO, I think the family uh, made me group CEO after 11 years of serving in the family. So I started literally from scratch and uh, I joined, the first company I joined in the group was Scientechnic uh, and uh, I came in, before that I was actually in Siemens. Uh, I spent a couple of years there, before that I was in, in Lloyds Bank. So I literally had to prove myself and my grandfather was the type of personality that would ask around and you know when I was in Siemens he would ask around and say, does he come on time? What does he do? Is he contributing? Is he? Did you? And I did. I, I came on time and I always left late as well. So uh, I was very specific and particular in making sure that you know I, I prepared the reports in the right manner. Uh, and uh, he called me up one day and he was like, uh, I want you to join the family business. And that was for me the ultimate you know, honor. And I said, are you serious? And he said, why would I be joking? You know? and, and I think that, that uh, interaction was, for me, the highlight of my career because I knew upon joining the family business, there is no way out. It's, it's a matter of serving until you're required to serve. And, and this was my ultimate motivation. I, needed to, I wanted to serve my family. And uh, I'm honored to be given that opportunity and privilege by them. When you land in Dubai from the airport, your fingerprints are everywhere as a group, but people don't necessarily know that. Absolutely. I mean, we're, we're really honored to be a part of the growth of the UAE. Uh, we've really 
had our fingerprints in many of the major projects. Take uh, Burj Khalifa, take Dubai Fountain, Dubai Mall, uh, Dubai Airport, uh, Sheikh Zayed Mosque. So we're, you know, we've been able to contribute one way or the other, be it in the, in the electrical field, be it in the furnishing field, uh, in, in the uh, electromechanical field. Uh, so quite different uh, contributions we've been able to actually uh, uh, take part in. And I think we're, we're blessed to have that opportunity and uh, there's so many more projects, uh, uh, but uh, I think we'd end up spending the whole interview mentioning. <laughs> so what is next for the group and do you think you'll be expanding into new sectors? Yes, I believe uh, the focus we have today is to strengthen our core businesses that we have. Uh, and in addition to that, we're looking at backward and forward integration. So whether it's acquisition, whether it's uh, uh, entrance into new business fields, uh, but uh, geographically, we're looking at expanding further into Saudi Arabia, uh, but at the same time, focusing on investing a lot in the UAE and in Dubai specifically. Amazing, we'll be following. Lisa Thank Algar, thanks so much for your time today. It's a pleasure, thank you very much. Thank you.